Hey, I'm Brett, and I am one of the editors at O'Reilly Media, and I'm sitting here with David Griffiths, who has just come over from across the pond. I have, yes. Not an affected accent to no, make you fine. sound smart. And um, I know we're, we're focusing on HTML5 this week. I think that for a lot of us, and, and I'm one of these guys, it seems like a whole slew of features, not really sure where to start, mm. not sure what it changes. What's, what's the high-level... Um, big things I need to care about, and, and, and what are we focusing on related to yeah. that today? I mean, there have been a lot of a lot of changes that have happened in HTML. Uh, the big things are that there are lots of features that previously you had to do individual hacks for. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so give, um, give me an example of that. An example of that would be, um, for example, if you're going to do client side graphics, which mm -hmm. is the thing we're going to look at in this video. Previously, you had to kind of generate that on the server. Mm -hmm. And if anyone's ever tried to generate server-side graphics, they're yeah, just no awful to actually work on. Right. Um, you know, there's going to be another video where we'll look at forms and okay. things. If you want to set focus in fields, there were always kind of pieces of JavaScript you always had to use. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, you know, for, for video, we've always had to use third-party plugins. And all of these kinds of features are now part of normal HTML. So it's to move away from individual hacks and go towards a standard. Okay. And what's the sort of migration path? I mean, I think a lot of us have tons and tons of sites that we've either built or maintained mm. or that we've consulted for. And HTML5, there, there's sort of a natural, oh, no, I'm going to have to rewrite it all. That's, yeah, fortunately, that's not the case. Um, HTML5 browsers are not a different species. Mm -hmm. You know, they'll still be able to follow the old websites. Mm -hmm. And there are features that you can add in. For example, if you're going to put in client-side graphics, you can put fallback features in there okay. to provide some sort of other functionality for browsers that don't support it. So it's actually quite nice the way it's been done, that it's it's been designed with a kind of smooth upgrade path right. in mind. And it definitely seems like, I mean, even when we talked about what you're going to be talking about, and I think you're building an Asteroids game. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have to admit that I remember getting that email going, really? I mean, games on the web are... I don't know about that. Yeah, well, I mean, there are there are games on the web at the moment, but they're pretty much all written in things like Flash. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, you know, you can do the same kinds of things that you can do in Flash, you can do in HTML5. Okay. There are kind of issues there. For example, you know, with Flash, you've got this amazing development environment, which you haven't really got at the moment for HTML5. Sure, but sure. tools will eventually evolve. Sure. Um, when we start to look at some of the, the WebGL features, you'll see that there's a whole new kind of game okay. that we're going to be able to bring to the web. Very nice. Um, but the other thing as well is that apart from doing 2D client-side graphics for games, they're quite a nice way of investigating the toolkit. So okay. if you're going to do something a little more humdrum, uh, like generate charts, right. you can still do that. Right. Um, it's just it's more interesting. So this is less about games and more Absolutely. about the ability to interact with the web and, and the client in a different way. Absolutely. Cool. Yeah. Well, let's get started. Okay. Okay, so we've talked a little bit about HTML5 in general, canvases in general. Um, it still is a little, I mean, honestly, I keep trying to relate it to like Java and, and kind of the hardcore programming. What does this look like in a web browser, uh, especially as compared to what I'm used to seeing in a web browser, which is yeah. either crappy games or, you know, you need to install Flash or whatever yeah. else? Well, what we're going to do today, you can use canvases that, that they use for client-side graphics, mm -hmm. which means that you've not got anything on the server generating the graphics. Right. The whole thing is done inside the browser. Right. So you can imagine people using it for charts and those sure. kinds of things. Sure, sure. But what I'm going to do here is create a, a version of Asteroids. Okay. A very cut-down version of Asteroids. Oh, nice. Um, which will allow us to kind of float around the screen. And so you're controlling this with the keyboard. I mean, this is, again, it's just I, I'm not used to this being in a web browser, so mm. it's, it's a bit of a paradigm shift. Blows up. It looks like you have yeah. bang up top. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've, we're going to use things that are using kind of animations and okay. rotations. You know how okay. to move things around oh. the screen. Oh, okay. So no collision on the asteroid. You just flew right. We just flew through it. That's. Uh, oh, and the game over. Exactly. Okay. So it's going to really. We're going to look at building a very cut down version of a game okay. because that's one of the best ways of demonstrating the different ways of programming a okay. canvas. And it looks like some of this is drawn. I mean, I'm, I, you know, like the, yeah. the ship looks drawn, but then the asteroids. Yeah, if I um, look like images that are rotating around. Yeah, we've got two types of graphics. We've got vector graphics, which is what the ship's made of. So that's okay. the that's the triangle. Okay. And that's got things in it like lines and polygons and right. filled areas. Right. And then we've also 
got graphics, normal graphics you'd see in a web page. Oh, right. And we're using a PNG image. Although not in the, the context I'm used to seeing them on a web no, page, unless no, it's like a tacky... Not. If it's you know, in a web really page, obnoxious. it's actually it's controlled by the browser. Okay. And what we're doing is we're drawing images that are completely under our control, that we're okay. creating. Well, we're not creating them with JavaScript, but we're actually painting them inside the canvas using okay. JavaScript. All using this canvas tag and JavaScript. Absolutely. Let's yeah. get into it. Okay.